Hey guys, today I'm going to be working on a uh, clutch issue on my 99F250, 7.3 liter with the uh, ZF6 transmission. Uh, one of the issues I've been having with it is uh, the clutch won't disengage until the pedal is like slammed right against the floorboard. And uh, a couple years back, I ended up replacing the uh, hydraulic system on it, thinking that was it. And it, it, it brought the pedal stiffness back. Uh, but then a few, mm, say three, four months later, it was back to its original place where it's just, you had to slam it on the floorboard just to even get it to be able to shift and uh, able to get it in reverse, low or first gear. I had to turn the truck completely off, put it in gear and turn it back on. And uh, all the other gears were really hard to shift in as well. Going on the highway, you just shift a lot easier just to not even use the clutch pedal and just match everything up. So. It's kind of annoying to have to turn the truck off just to be able to start moving forward. So um, since I already replaced the hydraulics once, my next guess was going to be the clutch fork. Um, I don't know what all years has affected them, but I know that they are known to crack and bend over time, which is going to reduce the amount of pressure that goes against the, the pressure plate by a ton. So kind of hoping and thinking that might be the next thing to look at, I dropped the transmission pulled the clutch off, pulled the clutch fork out, and to my surprise, it wasn't even bent. So it, it is the older style, and so while I had everything out and I'm putting a new clutch in it, I decided to get a new clutch fork, um, and I upgraded to the newer style just so I don't have to worry about it potentially failing in the future. Um, in fact, let's see here. The difference is, between the two are pretty significant uh, so this is the one that just came out and typically they crack right along up in this area and looking at it there's a mark right there which I think is just a casting issue but then along here and it's gonna be hard to see on camera there's a split that goes from here up around and down in front and that might maybe way too small to be able to see but uh, anyway that's a good indication that it's not cracked yet and it wasn't causing my issue, um, but it's already started, so down the road it could get worse. So I went ahead and bought one of these. It's not an OEM one, but it's the upgraded style. I got it off Amazon for relatively inexpensive. Um, and lining them up here, you could see the, the difference in, in how everything, so you reinforced longer on both sides, right where they were known to crack. So um, the gauge of steel, everything looks, the same but they're just reinforced longer so knowing that this is not the issue it was time to move on to the clutch pedal so I removed the hydraulics and the clutch pedal assembly from the truck and got to look at it more closely and there's a little plastic bushing up on here where the, the rod from the master cylinder connects to the clutch pedal and these bushings are known to wear or completely break and cause a whole bunch of play in the pedal. So we've got it all connected here temporarily. You should be able to see how much actual play is in this pedal. And that's not even moving the rod, that's just all the play from that plastic bushing being shot. So I take this apart. You can see the bushing's toast. The, uh, the pin that it lays on is completely, well, not completely worn down, but there's a good amount of chunk taken out of it. And this right here is all oval. Uh, so there's a there's probably about two inches or so of play right there that's definitely going to give me, take out a lot of the, the, the pedal travel to be able to disengage the, uh, the clutch. So one of the mods I found online to do this is people replace it with a heim joint. So I went to my local hardware store and got a 10 millimeter right hand thread joint. What we're going to do is cut the old one off and, and replace this here. And so what I was hoping to do, being getting this 10 millimeter, was the plan is to cut this right back here where the rod starts to round out. And then what I would have liked to have done is thread this for a 10 by 1.5, I believe is what this is, 
and uh, thread this on there so that way I can get the, the exact amount of um, length of what the original rod was. Unfortunately though, by miking these out and the inner diameter of these threads, this is about, I think it was six thousandths uh, thicker than the maximum diameter of what you, what a uh, 10 millimeter rod could be threaded at. So I don't think I'm going to be able to thread it and in fact I may have to end up drilling the, uh, the threads out of this and I end up getting a very small, small set screw that we're going to uh, drill and tap this right here on the heim joint and then lock this in place and just tighten the set screw so this won't move back and forth. And we probably probably won't be actually threading it into the rod, but since this is likely going to be a very tight fit, just the force of this being tightened down um, against this should keep everything in place. In fact, we might even just grind this flat so it's got a nice flat surface to seat into. And then the other mod from that is we're going to have to t grind this nub off here and then on the back side where it's welded we have to grind that flat. I'm hoping I can take a punch and either knock that out or I've got a press over here and be able to press that out and then get this all assembled and it should have no play at all in the uh, and the pedal. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and take the spring off, remove these e-clips and slide the pedal completely off so I can get my grinder and cutter in here and get everything cut off and hopefully punch, it out, punch this out with ease. So we'll get started here. We can just hit this out with a hammer and punch first. If not, we'll use the press. enough. Well, the bolt we're using is a 10 millimeter socket cap so I'm going to have to drill this out just a little bit more to get that to fit. and they're nice and snug, no play at all, just how we need it. 
So in order to make sure we get this the right length, we're going to go ahead and take the new joint. We'll just bolt it up, tighten it by hand for now, just so, it, so we get everything lined up just right. And we'll go ahead and make a mark right down here at the bottom so we know that once we cut the old end off and put the new on, we'll go down back to that mark so we've got everything at the same length as what it was before. Get a marker for that. Just going to use a regular permanent marker and then my scribe just in case some some reason my marker decides to wipe away. Now because this is obviously round and threaded, we're going to make sure that we need to cut below where this flat part, where it kind of ovals out, we want to get right down here at the bottom where it starts to round out again, so this should slide over it nicely. And that will give us about... That'll give us about 20 millimeters of uh, raw that's actually up inside this joint, so that'll be that'll be plenty for it to to fasten to. So we'll just get my cutting wheel and slice that right off. So like I mentioned earlier, because the diameter of this is too big to actually do a 10 millimeter thread on it, I think what I'm gonna do is just run a bit down here, just enough to scrape these threads out and smooth it out. And uh, then it should slide right over top of that. It's wanting to right now, it's just getting caught on that first thread though. Perfect. Not too bad. Now the last piece on this is we just want to drill a small hole through here and we're going to tap it. I believe that was for a four, could have been a three millimeter set screw. I'll check that with, against my tap set here.
Okay, yeah, this is an M4 by 70, I believe. Yep, M4 by 70. We need a 1 8 inch bit. And there's our bit. About 13 and a half millimeters wide. So we'll do six and three quarter. And then just scribe as best we can to find our center. And then we use a punch to get our starting point and then drill right through it. For this, for the steady hand, I'm going to go ahead and put this up in the uh, my small drill press here, bench press, so we can get that as vertical as possible. All right, so I got you set up here as close as I can. We'll just drill straight down through this, just through that first side, and then we'll uh, run the tap straight through it, and that should be it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and feed this in, just double check to make sure the threads and everything are good to go. Perfect. Lined up where we need it, tighten it down. I think what I'm going to do just to keep help keep this secure is one, I'm going to need to I'm going to flatten this rod out because right now it's completely round, so it doesn't really give it, give it a nice seat. So I'm going to run the grinder across it, flatten it out, and then I might uh, use the drill. Um, and just to give it a little bit of an opening, something a little bit wider than what the set screw is, tell me the screw has something to actually seat into. Because this was about the shortest length I could find at the hardware store in this thread size. So um, certainly don't want to cut it off. So I think it'll be best to just flatten it out and then make a little divot for it to sit into.
back up to our mark. Tighten it down enough to make a little bit of an indentation. So that when I remove it, I'll be able to see right where the set screw is. We'll put a punch into it. Yep. We'll put a punch right into that. And uh, we'll go up just a size, just over one eighth. That way the screw has something to kind of sink into. And that will be the end of this. So we know we're in there because it's not wanting to turn at all. Nice and snug. And there we go. Now we'll just double check our fitment here on the pedal. and assemble this again, if I can remember how. Looks like I am going to need a longer, longer socket bolt after all, but if that matters, it's not going to move. But now we can see how much play is in it. a slight amount only because the screw is not fastened down yet so already significantly less than what we had before solid so hopefully this has helped uh, anyone else who's been interested in doing this mod I know there's some there's write-ups out there in fact I've, I've I just skimmed through the pictures real quick before I did this just to get an idea um, I know there's some sellers on eBay who sell these you know sell the sell the whole kit and everything just ready to go um, you know I saved a few bucks I had the hardware store local that I knew I needed so I just went right down there and grabbed them for a little bit cheaper but um, it's I guess I've seen it's pretty straightforward I would uh, highly recommend it wasn't wasn't too difficult in fact I mean I would say some of the things I did as far as uh, tapping and, and kind of countersink that's probably not necessary but in my opinion it cleans it up just a little bit better uh, now the screw you can't see it's on the back side now but uh, sits completely flush so I don't have to worry about that catching on anything especially as this pedal kind of travels. I know the back side of this uh, arm here, if you call it, was it's going to move back a little bit um, as the pedal extends back out. In fact, it might not go much more, so it should be good. Um, so anyway, if anyone's seen this, I hope this has helped you um, with instructions on how to, how to go forward with this procedure. 
Uh, my next video I'm going to be working on, uh, it should be fairly short. I got a new uh, flywheel that came with my clutch kit. I end up just getting a, a Luke, um, just basically OEM clutch, nothing, nothing fancy. Came with a new uh, flywheel. And the pilot bearing that came with it, um, it's just the standard roller bearing that so many people have problems with. And in fact, I'll take you over and I'll show you exactly what happened to my previous bearing. So right here is basically the what's left of my last roller bearing that was in there. Completely destroyed at a... Uh, at idle or at least very low RPMs when the clutch was uh, engaged, it makes some pretty heavy grinding noises and I had no idea what that could have been. Uh, it's, it's been like this ever since I've owned the truck and this has been at least uh, six, seven years. So either this bearing has been bad for that long or I just got lucky and pulled it just at the right time because fortunately the input shaft um, was not damaged. Uh, it was lightly scarred but other than that, there wasn't too much to it. So this is the old uh, disc here. You can see there's not a whole lot on this back side of material left. And this is the, I guess, the, the outer race of that bearing. Um, and you can see it's all, all chewed up on the inside. Um, so I, just, I popped it out. And I've got the new... Clutch, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that one here. So this is the new um, flywheel that comes with the the loot kit, and here's the the pilot bearing that comes with it. Again, it's the same style roller bearing, just press fits into there, and uh, I mean, who knows? If I put this in there within the next three months, six months, a year. Tomorrow, who knows? Um, this thing's liable to just explode again like the last one. And I know with the uh, South Bend, South Bend clutch kits, they come with the, the Kevlar bushing, which is nice because you don't have to worry about if and when it goes bad. Um, all the metal here destroying your input shaft, that, that'll get expensive too. So rather than actually putting a Kevlar bushing in there, I end up getting this radial bearing sealed one here. The actual part number on it is 32032RS and uh, it is slightly bigger than the one that comes with it. Uh, so I'm looking to have my machine shop. They're going to bore this out slightly. I'm going to press this in and fortunately the, the inner is slightly, I, I mean it's, it's, it's very close. It's, it's not enough to, it's actually a tighter fit than the, the pilot bearing that comes with it. So even if, if you do had the pilot bearing that was destroyed and it kind of scarred your input shaft, which likely probably took a little bit of metal away, definitely an advantage going to this because it's gonna be a, a, a tighter fit. Um, like mine didn't have any real damage. It was just lightly scarred. I'll probably take some emery cloth just to go over it, clean it up. But um, yeah, this will fit on there nice and smooth and should should last a lot longer hopefully the basically the, the life of the truck or the at least the life of the clutch um i won't have any more issues so that'll be on the next video it should be pretty simple um i don't plan on having them press it and i do have a press over here i plan on doing it myself i just want to make sure that i i get it seated where i want it to be seated at um so yeah stay tuned for that but, uh, all right i hope this was informational to you um thanks again for watching